and thank you for joining me today. Welcome to my channel. Today we're doing this squirrel in ink and watercolour. The ink I've used is this De La Rowney calligraphy ink and I've used the brown colour. So we don't always need to do our ink and wash paintings using black. It's quite nice now and again to use a sepia or a brown depending on your subject. Um, the reason I've got this tissue here is because these lids are dreadful. Um, it always, always leaks. Can you see around the bottle? Whenever you get it out, it leaks. So um, that's one thing I really don't like about this ink. But the reason I've got it is because it's a nice permanent ink and it's light fast so that once it's dry, you can just go and paint over the top of it. But make sure it is dry, especially before you rub out your pencil lines. Can you see here where I've got a bit of a streak? That's where this wasn't quite dry when I was rubbing out my pencil lines. But hopefully that will get lost in the painting in a moment. So I'm not going to use too many colours. I will put the um, process of the drawing on at the end. I'll probably speed that up for you. But basically, basically I just used a dip pen. I had a few guidelines with pencil, not very many. And I just did it from eye really. I didn't check any measurements or anything. I just did quite a quick little sketch from, from eye. So um, the colours that I'm going to use in the watercolour, I've got burnt sienna. I've got raw sienna. This is raw sienna and sap green. This is sap green with a touch of alizarin and this is gamboge. So just a few colours, not many at all, just uh, leaving the um, actual drawing to show through. So first of all I'm going to do the background and I'm going to carefully draw around the squirrel and the tree. So he's got a little bit of white on the front of his chest so we need to be able to leave that area of paper dry where his little white chest is. You could always use masking fluid but I prefer just to, to leave that area dry. So a nice big brush so that we can cover the paper quite quickly. So this is a number 10 round synthetic brush and the paper that I'm using is a Faber-Castell mixed media pad which is a nice bright white and quite a smooth paper and it's one that I've used a lot in a lot of uh, recent tutorials. So to begin with I'm putting on the sap green. Like I say I've added a tiny touch of alizarin to that just to make it a bit more of a natural green. So we've wet that paper first all the way around the squirrel. Like I say leaving that little white chest area. and around his little foot there and I, I want to keep the background very very loose and hazy as if it's out of focus don't want any detail in the background just the detail of the drawing that wants to be on the squirrel himself okay but I've just mixed this little bit of gamboge up just to touch into that just to give us a bit of sun shining through or different colours of leaves or maybe shrubs behind. You could put some of those darks in. If you actually look at the picture here, there's a lot of darks behind him as well. But I think we just want to keep it a very simple little painting. So I'm just putting those two colours and then leave them to dry. Okay, so while those are drying, I'll put on the tree colour. So the tree colour that I'd made was the green with the raw sienna so I did very little drawing on the actual tree itself just an indication of where some of that texture of the bark was And you could actually pop a little bit of the um, yellow into there as well just to give us a bit of variety. In fact what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix up a tiny bit of the sienna, the raw sienna, and pop that in. Because in places where the bark's kind of split a little you can see the yellow underneath popping through. And do this all quite quickly while it's wet in wet and leave it very loose. Okay, and then we really should leave that to dry before we come back and do the actual squirrel. 
Okay, so that's more or less dry, just a little bit damp maybe still. But we can come back now and do this grill. Now you'll notice I have one or two cauliflowers here. It's a bit of a mess at the top here. That's because um, the pad's slightly buckling. It's obviously a mixed media pad. It's not a watercolour paper and I've just got it clipped at the end. And I wasn't watching it. I went away to do something else while it dried. And obviously where it was pooling at this corner, it's dragged back into the picture and made these cauliflowers. So what you need to do is whilst it's drying, if you do get any areas where it's pooling and there's a danger of it doing that, just get a tissue and lie it next to where it's pooling and suck up the, the water. Um, that's one little thing you can do just to save you getting these cauliflowers. Sometimes it doesn't matter, we've got one here on the trunk and that really doesn't matter because it looks a little bit like it's some texture on the um, trunk there anyway. Okay, so we'll come and do the squirrel now. So burnt sienna is just a fantastic colour just to use straight from the, the pan um, for something like a squirrel because it's already that colour so we don't need to mix anything else in with it. It's just the perfect colour match. So we're just painting now wet on to dry. And all I'm going to do is put the sienna on, perhaps put a little bit of yellow in places and leave some white paper in places as well. But I'm not going to do all the detail that we can see there. So you'll see I use the pen when I do the drawing and like I said I will put the actual drawing process on afterwards but I use the pen to make the lines around the eyes and these lines here around the neck just to give the shape of his face uh, and his little skull underneath there. I mean, it's a fantastic photograph. This one's off Pixabay. So if you just type squirrel into the search bar in Pixabay, you'll be able to find him. Um, and the, the thing about it is you could, you could do a much more detailed study of him as well. I'm not actually leaving much white here, am I? We've got a little bit of white on his back there. So if, like me, you forget, you can always come along with your tissue and lift some of that out or your, your brush. So if you see here, he's got quite a white patch sort of going around there. And that also makes a bit of the shape of his, his back as well, doesn't it? And some little white hairs. And of course, we've got a little bit of colour on his foot coming around there. But the rest of this is white underneath his neck. And those few hairs and I'm going to use that same colour in the leaves we could have chosen a different colour for the leaves but I wanted to keep this simple this was just to show you how you can with a, um, an ink and wash it's quite nice just to have a few colours and leave your drawing as the main sort of focus and let those pen lines show show through So in the actual photograph, this down here is a green, sort of a cypress type thing. Um, Christmas tree, should I say, but I'm going to leave it these nice autumny colours. And then some of the yellow. So this was a raw sienna. And just in some places is a bit more yellow than he is tan. And actually in his ear there is a little bit pink, so like I say, if you did a very detailed uh, painting of him, you'd, you'd need a lot of colours in here. When you start looking very closely, there's all sorts of different colours in, but we're just keeping it simple. I'm just picking up one or two of the shapes of his form there. You can see this bone where the shoulder is. And also down here, this is where he's, he, it's his leg rather than his body, so you need to separate the two. We could also put a little bit of that into some of the leaves as well if we wanted. Just let it mix in. So I don't actually think I need to put any more detail around his eye. I quite like his eye as it is, so I'm going to leave that. And what I will actually do just now is mix up a tiny bit of the sienna with a lot less water in it. So it's quite sort of straight out of the pan really. 
so it's nice and thick and just put that where it's reddest and darkest so around here that just makes the shape of this going up and then behind his ear it just makes his ear stand out a little bit more this shape above his eye this is all just going to make the shape of his skull really a little bit more and then down here across here and down his leg onto his sort of little ankle you can see where the um, fur sort of going over his ankle if you like there perhaps a little bit more here just to he's a bit the same tone as the tree here so if we just put a little bit there it just makes him stand out a bit from the tree and then I'm just going to use the tip of my brush to make one or two sort of lines in fact I can use a little bit of dry brush there to get a bit more texture on him again his little hand there okay so it's one of those things where you could fiddle around and get do more and more detail but I want to leave it just like that just to show you that you just need those few little colours to make a pretty little picture and leave the lines of the um, drawing to show through okay so I hope you enjoyed that and if you find this I'll put the link down below to Pixabay for you to find this lovely squirrel picture and perhaps have a go yourself I just thought he had a really nice character about him the way he was looking uh, and peeping out from be between those two branches and his little uh, fancy hairdo there okay so we don't uh, have red squirrels here but we don't need to go much further north than here to find them so we do see them quite often um, and it's lovely to paint them and I think it's quite an autumnal feel to it as well with it being this time of year, those lovely colours. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know how you get on with it and thank you for watching and I'll be back again soon. Bye for now. Thank you.